this fisher is about to embark on a rather special journey. One that is going to contribute to the conservation and growth of this species in a different country. The Cascade Mountain Range in Washington State has many animals that call this wild expanse home, except the fisher. It disappeared from this range back in the mid-1900s. Biologists from the state of Washington reached out to the Alberta Trappers Association for help. I, I think it's a really exciting time for trappers because, you know, now we get to really showcase our passion for the bush and for the animals in the bush, as well as showcase their passion for conservation. Ryan Golby is one of 21 trappers participating in the Fisher Relocation Program. He is putting his 20 plus years of trapping experience to good use when it comes to selecting prime locations to set up his live traps. Well, the, f the first thing we, we do is, is we look for habitat, where we think would be good fisher habitat with enough um, bush um, and mixed forest, if possible, with, with a good rabbit, squirrel, partridge population, um, meadow voles and mice, that kind of thing. So they got the food supply and they've got the cover and the nesting habitat as well for, for them to re raise their young. Then we look at um, securing permission if it's privately owned or if it's, or if it's crown land, securing the permission on the crown land. We're, we've got, uh, between my partner and myself, we've got uh, just a little over 15 traps set and it's a mandatory 24 hour check so every 24 hours we're checking them. So we're looking at um, two, two and a half to three hours, depending on what we got to do per day that we're committed to this program. We caught one here in this location last winter. And in fact, this is, this is the location where I caught a snowshoe hare already this year. I don't know what it is, but it seems to be a good location for I think this is a pretty good rabbit trail right here, so um, seems to be good for them running just the edge of the road. The final trap of the day was located no more than 20 feet from a relatively busy road, but it seems fishers are becoming more comfortable around agricultural and ranching environments. The sea fishers um, more prevalent in and around the ranching and farming communities uh, in central and northern Alberta because there is more food and so there's more fishers. So remember that final trap Ryan set close to that busy road? Okay, we just noticed that the uh, trap door is down so we know we've got something in the trap. Now we'll go and see what it is. It could be a skunk, it could be a arctic hare, it could be a squirrel, it could be a weasel, just depending. Okay, I've just confirmed that it is a fisher. And now, the delicate task of moving the fisher from the field trap to the transfer box. For this setup, Ryan is joined by Chuck, his trapping partner. Here, you want here, you take the transfer collar yeah, and take, the wire, and I'll take the trap. Okay. Yep, oh yeah. Because okay. we've got a little bit of a stump here in our road, so we'll see what we can do here. Right, there, eh? right like that. We can move the trap a little bit. I can pull this back right now once we get the collar on. I don't want him to hurt himself, right? Okay. Um, he appears to be a male fisher. Yeah, sometimes you can tell by the, the pointedness of the nose, seeing this with quite a bit pointed and he's larger. He's a fair good size one, yes. I don't know if he can turn around in there or not. I hope he can. Move the trap a little bit here. Let's get the, let's get the trap moved up here. Okay. 
Let's move. Just hang on here. Let's get this. Let's get this. Uh, no, I just want the. I just want the one out, right? We can I'll hold it. Don't worry. You got that? I got this one. Yeah. Okay. I gotta. I want to turn this just a little bit without getting bit. There you go. Yeah. Now go to the. If you can go up front there, Chuck, and see if we can't get him. Set your side up, Chuck. With the fisher securely tucked away with food and water, its next stop is the Calgary Zoo. Just enough to keep him tidied over for his trans his for his trip to the Calgary Zoo. Just tell me this when they get It's here that all the fishers which have been captured go through a rigorous exam. Well, we want to make sure, one, that that animal is coming in healthy and has been essentially making a living where it is. Is it in good body condition? Is it in good coat condition? And that gives us an idea right off the bat that this, this animal behaviorally and physically is healthy. Um, and then we look at specific markers. So uh, teeth is a big one. Um, in 2018, we saw a number of animals with broken teeth. Has not been as big an issue this year, but I think we're getting a lot of young animals this year. Um, so do they have a functional mouth as a hunter? So for us, that means at least three um, good gripping canine teeth. Uh, if they have a couple of canine teeth that are broken off short, we would not send that animal for release. Uh, we'll look for other injuries. So missing toes would be something, not something we found in any of the animals we've looked at, but it was something that the, the Fisher team doing the reintroductions had flagged as a potential concern. And the impression of the health of this young male? So all of our fishers get vaccinated against rabies and distemper, which are two diseases they're susceptible to in the wild. So to increase their potential survival, they get vaccinated in advance. And they also all get treated with antiparasitics for the same reason, in case they have any um, ectoparasites or endoparasites to ensure we have the best possibility for survival after release. So overall, what are your impressions of this? This is a gorgeous, healthy male fisher who I think is going to do a great job post-translocation. So far, I don't see any indications of poor health. He looks in great condition. A physical assessment is not the only procedure these fishers undergo. During their time at the zoo, they're under constant observation to determine their suitability for relocation. We, we have the challenge to describe their behavior. We want, everyone knows if you have a dog at home, you know if your dog is shy or if, he, if he's, his, he's bald. So we're trying to define this for every individual fisher we're having here. And we're trying to connect that information with how are they doing when they're released in, in, the, in the wild in Washington. So hopefully we're looking for what are the best individuals to survive in the wild. So if we can find that, then we may help future programs to choose the best candidates to survive in the wild. After monitoring this fisher overnight, his next trip will be a short flight to Abbotsford, BC, where biologists from Washington State will meet him. This conservation program demonstrates what we can achieve when working together and highlights the significant role Alberta trappers are playing. A lot of them are conservationists at heart, and they uh, they don't they don't want to they don't want to kill off a species any more than anybody else does. So uh, the idea that they can help fix one that's that has a lot of appeal to a lot of them, and it it makes it really great to work with with well, not just the trappers but everybody, but and trappers in particular because they you know they are tuned into these species and they care about these species and they like to see this this population in Washington get restored. And, uh, and Alberta trappers are, are, have been incredible and uh, effective and, uh, and really careful with these animals that we catch so that the ones we release are in great, great shape. 